So delicately balanced is this globe. It is a wonder how it has survived, with its immense preserves, intact so far. So varied are the chemical compounds, organic and the inorganic both, that man can never e'en remotely know in ages their count and complexity. So finely blended is the atmosphere that subtlest odors, so extremely faint a thousand times the olfactory sense of man can clearly scent it as in dogs. So strongly shielded is frail earthly life from the bombardment of the cosmic rays that if the tough umbrella is removed a while, all of it would be soon destroyed. So wisely is environment designed that in the slight pollution caused by man compared to the size of the biosphere with his yet maladjusted industry for living creatures poses a serious threat. So well judged is the distance from the sun and so well planned the elliptic orbit that the changing seasons are a boon to life. So carefully was unarmed man brought up in the spacious cradle of the Mother Earth that he survives while forms a hundred times in size with thickly armored bodies died. So gently she does her diurnal rounds that he does not receive the slightest jolt. So lavishly supplied with all his needs that he too often overfeeds himself. So well adorned with beauty for his sake that he has picked up all his art from her. So bounteous with delicious fruit and grains, with vegetables, timber, wood and crops, with lovely flowers, umbrageous trees and plants, so richly stocked with cattle, horses, sheep, with cats and dogs, with fishes, beasts and birds, for company and to fulfill his wants. So lushly covered with soft carpets of luxuriant grasses, spongy turf and herbs, so finely decked with rivers, springs and lakes, with waterfalls, cascades and warbling brooks, in short, a granary beyond compare, with hidden treasures still beyond his ken, so marvelously fashioned and maintained that mortal intellect reels at the thought, a rare elysium for the darling child, for whom the well-concealed maternal love of nature has been so exceeding warm and so solicitous for his welfare that, without his knowledge, she has stocked the globe with all the needs of his predestined rise to more perceptive states of consciousness. But, verily, it would be hard to find, in all the world, a creature so perverse and thankless as man is, with all his wit when he ascribes it all to accident, not to the bounty of a gracious God. With nature's open book before their eyes, some scholars, too sure of their intellect, find it so hard to reconcile themselves to their religion, as their vanity prevents them from accepting that there is an ocean of intelligence, in which they are but sand grains on the lowest bed. It is this vanity that blocks the path to their admission of the patent truth that man is still evolving on his way towards an unthought-of superior brain to explore the still mysterious world of thought. It is too much for some to accept this view because it badly hurts their vanity to think there can be higher minds than theirs that see beyond what is perceived by them and can disprove their pet ideas and fads, which may have brought distinction and renown or are believed sincerely to be true. This is the reason why religious truths are not so palatable to that rank of scholars who have high positions in materialistic fields, as that would make their stand untenable. And since they exceed, by far, the count of those who honor faith, the earth's academics refuse to own the scripture-based idea of man's ascent to regions of surpassing glory, 
which are far beyond the wildest dream of those who proudly flaunt their learning or their rank, diplomas or degrees, to establish well their right to occupy the front line seats in all departments knit with mortal life. Awareless of the future human fate, and of the awesome wisdom hid behind the seemingly insentient nature, lost in wild conjectures to explain the gaps in their philosophies which stand unfilled, they oft commit deplorable mistakes in their assessment of the universe, in the opinions held on soul and God, and, as the harvest of this ignorance, misguide the race not knowing where they slip, unable to amend the errors made. The Present Crisis, Chapter 2 In this dispassionate survey, the first to come should be the holy men, who claim first-hand experience of the exalted state of samadhi, or mystic vision, or ecstatic trance, saja or sartori, to mention a few names applied to that rich state of consciousness in which the seer perceives himself immersed deep in a vast, unbounded ocean of pure being, lost in contemplation of a wondrous plain of Gnosis, where the sense-bound soul, released from carnal chains, observes its unity with an unnameable living presence which defies description, one omniscient intelligence, eternal, infinite, encompassing the whole creation. Yet, despite its majesty, the humble self of the enravished seer in the trance. A rare phenomenon, which e'er evoked the keenest interest amongst the wise from the dim dawn of culture, and now forms the springhead of all revealed religious lore of earth, with crystallized directions for the guidance of the evolving human race. 